she was forcibly undressed and thrown into a large bathtub full of ice cubes to prevent her from escaping. The nurses fastened the sealed lid with rope. This is a method used a hundred years ago to control the mentally ill who don't listen. Even the strongest devils can be broken by this form of hydrotherapy. Unfortunately, Eugenie was not sick at all. She has the special ability to see things that ordinary people can't. Just now her limbs stiffened and she was possessed by her grandfather's spirit. She pulled a long lost necklace out of a drawer, but her family didn't believe she had psychic powers. And that's when her fate changed. Her father sent her to an asylum under the guise of a party. In the asylum, she was stripped naked and forced to undergo a full body examination. Once she was cleared, she was sent to a dormitory under the supervision of a nurse. A delirious old woman tried to touch her face. Eugenie stood still, afraid to move. Genevieve, who lived in the next bed, chased her away and told her gossip over dinner, like who's nice to be around and who not to mess with. Many of the women here are really crazy, but have been sent here by their families for various reasons. Genevieve was sent here by her aunt because her uncle tried to force her to have sex, causing her to have a seizure. This asylum specialized in women. In the 19th century, it wasn't just for the mentally ill, but for normal women who had done something wrong. Women had to be treated psychologically. If they didn't obey, the doctors would inflict all sorts of cruel treatments. All the patients are forced to obey. Eugenie wants to leave and be free. But to do so, she had to prove that she had special powers, not insanity. So she chose the head nurse. The kindly looking head nurse stopped dead in her tracks. Eugenie stood in front of the ledge and said her sister's name. In order to convince her, Eugenie gave details of her sister's physical appearance. The head nurse remained as calm as possible. Eugenie said, your sister is standing right now. I can make you communicate. But the head nurse didn't fully believe her and left. She went home and took out the box full of envelopes. And the emotions of missing her sister came rushing back. The next day, Eugenie's brother began to miss Eugenie in the asylum. He brought the psychic book and asked the head nurse to give it to his sister. The brother's hard eyes filled with tears. The head nurse agreed and left in a hurry. At home, she pored over the book. The details about spirits reminded her of her deceased sister. Her breath began to catch, and she suppressed the tears that were about to fall. She closed the book, but she couldn't calm down. Unable to concentrate on her work, she went to the church to pray and crossed a corridor full of clothes. The head nurse took Eugenie's brother's book and gave it to Eugenie. The next day, the routine checkup began. The doctor sat her day at his desk in a black suit. He asked Eugenie if she could really see ghosts. Eugenie said she was just possessed and woke up with a necklace. The doctor thinks she's delusional. Eugenie asks him if he believes in God but not in spirits. The doctor told her the treatment plan. She's to have hydrotherapy every two weeks and is forced into the treatment room by a nurse. She was terrified as she watched the doctor mercilessly pounding ice cubes with an iron hook. Then Eugenie was forced to undress and lie in a bucket of ice. Eventually, she survived. When she returned to the dormitory, Genevieve, who lived in the next bed, helped her keep warm. But the next day, Genevieve was taken to perform for the rich. She was hypnotized by the doctor to slowly raise her hand to touch her body on command. All the rich people were mesmerized by the performance. Suddenly, she fell to the ground and lost control of her body and started convulsing all over her body. This scene caused all the nobles to become excited. What they didn't know was that she had a seizure. Due to the hypnotic stimulation, Eugenie called the head nurse in order to get out of here earlier. She promises to let the head nurse talk to her sister, but only if she gets her out of here. It's not easy, but the head nurse agrees. The two of them entered a large room. Eugenie was soon channeling. She puts her hands over her head and senses the movements in the room. A long time passed and Eugenie didn't respond at all. Just as the head nurse was losing patience, Eugenie gasped for breath. The head nurse rushed over and asked her about her sister. Eugenie said, in all seriousness, that her father was in danger in the kitchen. Without thinking, the head nurse rushed home. When she opened the door, there was only an empty room. The head nurse laughed at the deception, but then she saw a blood saying rag on the table. Then she saw her father's nose bleeding. Luckily, she arrived in time to avoid a tragedy. With this, the head nurse finally decided that Eugenie's special powers were real. She also wanted to help Eugenie escape from the asylum. With the matron's help, Eugenie's chances of escape are high, but then something happened to her friend, Genevieve. The innocent Genevieve, who was dancing in the morning, became paralyzed under the doctor's constant hypnosis. She suffered another seizure, and the man who started it all is watching her in a suit. Eugenie is furious and accuses the doctor of incompetence, but it's this action that makes the doctor angry. The doctors force her to undergo an even more brutal treatment. They put her in a tiny room with one small window, which could only be opened for a few minutes a day to let in light. Eugenie's days were unbearable. This narrow room was filled within this darkness. She wastes daily for the food. 
that is placed in the doorway and in the hole. Eugenie was going crazy. Just when she was about to die, the head nurse found a chance to visit her quietly and promised to get her out. Then the head nurse, together with the others, stole the key and came to the dark room to talk to her. Eugenie leans against the wall and pleads with the matron, in her sisterly voice, to stop writing letters and start a new life. The head nurse who is crying uncontrollably and thanked her. She slides her hand down the wooden door and shakes Eugenie's hand while she's locked in the cabin. When she came out, she was caught in the act and had to give the key back. So she found another way. She asked the doctor to move Eugenie back to the regular ward. But through the conversation, she learned something new. In a day's time, there's going to be a carnival in the asylum. And a lot of aristocrats are going to be there. She thought of a way to get Eugenie out of the way. She wrote to Eugenie's brother asking for help. When the day of the ball finally arrived, everyone changed into beautiful gowns and more elaborate makeup. And Eugenie was no exception, but she was more interested in getting out of here. She followed the other madwoman slowly down the stairs. Her brother was watching her. Despite her excitement, Eugenie really didn't show any joy. A caretaker is at her side, watching her intently. As the music starts, the siblings are finally reunited at the ball. The head nurse smiles with relief at this. On the dance floor, the women are getting drunk after a few drinks. By now the aristocrats had begun to prey on them. Even the paralyzed patients. One of the aristocrats pushed Genevieve to a secluded room. In an empty corridor, he opened a door. Genevieve realized something was wrong. But it was too late. She was paralyzed and couldn't run. She was forced onto the table. Then the nobleman began to pull down his pants. Genevieve refused him. But there was no escape. She was like a sheep at the mercy of the slaughter. Fortunately, another patient had noticed Genevieve's disappearance. She asked for the help of a powerful man to save Genevieve and beat up the aristocrat. Eugenie also took advantage of the confusion to escape. She rushed into the crowd while the superintendent was chatting with someone else. Under the protection of the head nurse, she managed to enter a room. The sibling hugged each other tightly. Eugenie's grievances were released at this moment. After getting into civilian clothes, the two of them were led by the head nurse to escape through the back door. But the superintendent followed them and stopped them. She tugged at Eugenie's hand and refused to let her go. With the help of the head nurse and her brother, she was able to free herself. The superintendent couldn't stop her and called for help. One of the patients, pretending to be crazy, drags the superintendent into a dance to slow her down. The three of them run wild through the asylum. Freedom is at hand, and the carriage for them is waiting outside. Finally, they reach the door. The superintendent is on their heels. They open the gate and let Eugenie out first, followed by her brother. But the head nurse closed the door. She decided to stay and clean up the mess. Knowing what would happen to the head, nurse see if she stayed. Eugenie begged her to go with her. The head nurse had already made up her mind. Finally, after much urging, Eugenie got into the carriage and left. The superintendents were furious. They thought the head nurse had gone mad. In the end, they imprisoned the head nurse. He's a psychopath. The former hospital administrator was now a psychopath. But she was free. Instead of returning home after her departure, Eugenie traveled the world using her special abilities to help people talk to the dead. In the days to come, the head nurse often receives letters from Eugenie, which tell of Eugenie's life experiences. The head nurse receives the letters, and although her body is trapped in the asylum, her soul has followed Eugenie as she travels around the colorful world. In a sense, she is also spiritually liberated.